Hello, my name is Rory Monaghan. I'm the director of the Energy Engineering Programme here at NUI Galway, and I'd like to introduce you to our engineering programmes at NUI Galway. We're one of the top ranked universities in the world, as decided by our peers. We're in the process of building out a brand new campus along the banks of the River Carob, spreading from the, the centre of Galway City into the outskirts in Dangan, where we have our own playing fields. And we have a large income. We take in about a quarter of a billion euro every year. And this has resulted in us having an alumni network of nearly 100,000 graduates that are spread all around the world. We have very, very high graduate employment of about 98%. This puts us in the top tier of Irish universities with our graduates working in, in, in excellent jobs all over the world. In terms of engineering, we've been doing engineering here in the university for over 170 years. Um, we originally started with only a civil engineering degree, but over the years we've added more and more, and I'm going to spend some time today talking about those different programs and why we think it's a great idea for students to uh, join us here in Galway. First of all, what are engineers? Um, Sometimes people get confused between what scientists do and what engineers do, but we like to use this uh, quote from, from the great scientist von Karman. Scientists discover the world that exists. Engineers create worlds that never were. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we take the knowledge that our colleagues in science discover and develop, and we make that into real life practical products. So whether that's robotics or space travel or building the energy system of the future or creating implants uh, that can improve the quality of people's lives and their health, engineers are taking uh, knowledge and creating. So it's fundamentally a creative profession. We use mathematics. We use, the, as I said, the scientific discoveries that scientists make, and we use our experience uh, through practical um, exercises to develop this, uh, to develop these ideas. We could be described as builders, inventors, innovators, problem solvers. Problem solving is a big part of what we do. Without problems in the world, there would be no need for engineers. So engineers are here to solve problems. There's an impression that um, engineers are people who wear hard hats and work on building site. Well, that's that's certain types of engineers do that. And I'll talk about uh, those those types of engineers. But there's also engineers who work in highly, um, highly sophisticated labs. We work in small teams, big teams, work alone sometimes. And as I said, the fundamental goal for engineers is to create things that society needs, things that have never been created before. I'll spend the next few slides talking through briefly the types of engineering that we offer here at NUI Galway and to use the word programs. So the first program is civil engineering. Now, some of you may have an idea of what civil engineers do, but fundamentally civil engineers create objects that are designed not to move. They are designed to be put into our physical environment and they're designed to withstand the test of time. So some examples of these will include bridges, include buildings, but there's maybe some less obvious ones, tunnels, um, tunnels that carry cars, that carry or that carry energy supplies. Um, we've got some wind turbines here. Civil engineers design the foundations that hold these structures up. Civil engineers also deal with minimizing um, uh, the impact of humankind on the environment, especially in terms of our water infrastructure. So civil engineers design water treatment and wastewater treatment um, systems. So they are creating things that are fundamentally needed by society. On a different part of the spectrum are mechanical engineers. Mechanical engineers design objects that are specifically meant to move. So while civil engineers design things that are not meant to move, mechanical engineers design things that move. Now, we can be dealing with the movement of solid objects like propellers on aircraft. Uh, we could be dealing with the movement of fluids like flow around the Formula One racing car, or we could be dealing with movement of heat through materials in a power generation station. Mechanical engineers deal with movement. This could also be in orthopedic objects. So we have to design objects that move 
um, safely and easily inside the human body. So mechanical engineers deal with movement. Um, the objects that we make are maybe not as permanent as what civil engineers make, but because they move, they're subject to different stresses and strains and different constraints. Electrical electronic engineers, they create anything that involves electricity. So whether that's large scale movement of electricity from power generation sites, from wind farms, from solar farms to end users, whether that's battery systems in electric vehicles or whether it's the remote sensing needed to operate autonomous driverless vehicles, electrical and electronic engineers create these systems. They dream them up, they implement them and they put them into real life. We've got in the top left there, the cockpit of an aircraft. Aircraft are traditionally thought of as being mechanical engineering devices, but there is now more electronic systems in them in terms of how the aircraft fly and how we communicate and keep track of and keep aircraft safe. There's so much electrical and electronic components in there that they're really like flying computers. Um, electrical electronic engineers also deal with the huge amount of data that's being produced and we have to come up with ways of keeping this, this, this data safe and secure. Electronic and computer engineering then is really the fusion of hardware and software for electrical devices. So if we think of it this way, that a iPhone without computer software is essentially a brick or a paperweight, whereas computer code without hardware is just writing on a computer screen. What electronic and computer engineering does is fuses the two and creates devices that can change the world. So like mobile devices like phones, laptops, to the communication systems that are lodged in everything that we use today, to the embedded electronics and um, measurement devices that are on everything that we use. Electronic and computer engineering fuses the hardware and the software together. Biomedical engineering then takes elements of mechanical and electronic engineering. And those elements are united by the fact that they are the, the um, key parts of those disciplines that deal with human health and well-being. So biomedical engineers need to know about the movement of objects within the human body, whether that's movement of joints and orthopedic uh, implants, or whether it's movement of blood flow and air that needs to be assisted by stents. Um, so they've got elements of mechanical engineering um, to, be, to be examined in, in, in biomedical. They also need to examine um, pieces of electronic engineering. So this could be uh, sensors that people can have implanted in them to keep track of things like um, insulin levels or to keep track of um, uh, heart rate or blood pressure. So biomedical engineers are really working at the interface between the traditional degrees of mechanical and electronic engineering to develop new technologies to improve people's quality of life. Energy engineering then is another one of these interface engineering disciplines and energy engineers take elements of mechanical, civil and electronic engineering to design sustainable energy systems of the future. So whether that's large scale objects like wind turbines or wave energy devices, whether it's designing efficient electrical systems to move large amounts of electricity and large amounts of data around countries, or whether it's designing um, zero emissions vehicles like electric cars or hydrogen powered trucks. Energy engineers are using skills from mechanical, civil, electrical engineering to develop this sustainable technology for the future. So one thing that unites all engineers, regardless of our discipline, is that we tackle big challenges. Um, so if we're to look at what some of the major global challenges of facing the world are, aging populations, um, equitable distribution of wealth around the world, huge amounts of information being generated by electronic devices and how we keep that information safe. The whole idea of environmental sustainability, supply of energy and um, um, preservation of natural resources. Engineers of all different um, disciplines are working on these. And I'm just going to play a little video here that illustrates some of the challenges that engineers are facing within the climate sphere. Energy touches every aspect of life, from keeping us warm and safe to keeping us connected. 
For too long, the energy we use has polluted our land, water and air. But we have found our voice and we say enough is enough. The science is crystal clear. Now is the time to act. Transforming to a zero carbon society will be one of the greatest challenges we have ever faced. But we are ready. You are ready. Energy engineers will lead this revolution, imagining new ways to harness sun, wind and wave, creating new technologies to give us clean mobility, building a truly sustainable future for us and for generations to come. We are rising to meet the challenges of a lifetime. Will you join us? I'm an energy engineer. I am an energy engineer. I'm, I'm an, an energy, energy engineer. engineer. So the question that we have for you is, could you be an engineer? Maybe you've considered it before, maybe you haven't, but we're interested in people who are interested in how things work. If you have a curiosity about the objects around you, about the world around you, you should be an engineer. If you enjoy mathematics and the combination of other technical subjects with science, we think you should be an engineer. If you're interested in new technology, phones, computers, bigger things like cars, aircraft, renewable energy devices. And if you want to invent these technologies and not just use them, we think you should be a, an engineer. Fundamentally, if you want to use creativity to make the world a better place, we think you should be an engineer. And engineering jobs are plentiful. We've got virtually full employment of our engineering graduates over the last number of years. So there are huge opportunities out there for engineers. Why do we think you should choose NUI Galway to study engineering? Well, we learn by doing here at NUI Galway. We, um, we, we teach engineering in classroom settings, but we also have a huge amount of practical work, of lab work. And this is just some of the images of our students going, going through their various lab assignments in different fields of engineering. Over here on the right-hand side, this is some pictures of a very special hands-on engineering project that we've been running for the last number of years. And this is a project called The Geek. The Geek is a, is a team run entirely for and by NUI Galway engineering students. And their objective is to dream up, design, invent, build and race a zero emissions, super efficient car. And um, this, uh, this, this, this top picture is our crowning achievement of winning the Technical Innovation Award at the Eco Marathon Europe, essentially the European Championships of Zero Emissions Vehicles. Um, so this is Galway engineers competing with the very best in the world and winning. So how do we structure our engineering programs here at NUI Galway? Regardless of what type of engineering you choose on the CAO, whether it's civil, mechanical, electrical, electronic, electronic and computer, biomedical or energy, we have the same common first year where you get a sample of each of the types of engineering that we teach. And you also work on a few projects that give you the key fundamentals of engineering disciplines here. You then go to second and third year where you start to specialize a little more in your, um, in your chosen field of engineering. And then we have two exit points from each of our programs. We have an exit point after four years where you would be leaving with a bachelor's and we also have an exit point after five years where you leave with a master's. And a master's is essentially an advanced degree which has got increased international recognition for your qualification. We also have an undenominated engineering entry point. And this is for if you know you're interested in engineering, but you don't know specifically what type you would like to do. So you again, because it's a common first year, you're at no disadvantage in terms of what you experience as a first year engineering student. Um, it just means that at the end of first year, you choose which engineering specialism you would like to pursue for the rest of your years. We also run a BSc degree in project and construction management. And again, you can enter that directly or you can enter that through undenominated engineering. Just to comment then about work placement, and I'll be talking more in detail about that later on. We offer eight month work placement fully paid and that either happens at the end of third year if you're in the four year bachelor's program or it happens at the end of fourth year if you're in the five year master's program. And as I'm going to talk about later on, 
these are really the highlights of many students' engineering educations at NUI Galway. An aspect of our engineering education at NUI Galway that we're particularly proud of is our work placement program. So, as I said, after third year or after fourth year, depending on whether you're studying the bachelor's or master's options of engineering, you go on a fully paid work placement. Um, this has been running at NUI Galway for the last number of decades, and we have a very, very strong network of employers who come back to NUI Galway every year because of the quality of our, our students. Um, so, as I said, this is a paid placement, and the university does everything it can to assist you in getting this placement. We have an office whose sole role is dedicated to getting our students on work placement. We have CV training, we have interview skills training, and they really take you through the whole process. And this has resulted in our students for the last number of years having full placement employment. And um, uh, this is with companies that we show some of our companies' names here. This is with companies based around Galway, based around Ireland, and an increasing number of them are based internationally. Um, we've had students doing their work placement all throughout Europe, in North America, and as far away as South America and Australia. So this really is the highlight of an engineering um, uh, program at NUI Galway for most of our students. And certainly when I was a student here, this was the highlight for me, where you got to see engineering going on in the real world and really understand what makes engineers tick. There's a couple of videos here where you can see um, for yourself what our students think of their work placement program. You can um, learn about what our students do on work placement for, from the different disciplines. And um, you can click through these and they're, they're very informative. I'd like to talk a little bit now about the venue that we do most of our teaching in. This is the Alice Perry Engineering Building um, on, on, on the NUI Galway campus, which is right on the banks of the River Corrib in Galway City. Um, it's the largest engineering building in Ireland. It's an absolute world-class facility. All of our lecture halls are in here, all of our labs are here, and most of the students' project work is done in or around this building. The building is what's called a living laboratory. That means that it is packed to the brim with sensors. It's um, monitoring its own energy consumption, monitoring its um, thermal performance, its structural performance and we are using it as a learning and teaching tool and we use this for conducting world-class research as well. It's one of the things that our students talk about the most, um, that they really enjoyed being taught how to be an engineer in such a state-of-the-art engineering facility. So you can take a little tour here at this video um, of, the, of, of, of the engineering building. I'd like to say a couple of words about women in engineering. Engineering has in the past been a male dominated profession. Um, that's changing now and we are certainly working to change that at NUI Galway. Um, we have um, women engineers in all of our programs and what we find typically is that women engineers come disproportionately near the top of our class. Um, one thing that is for sure, though, is that engineering, like many, many fields um, of employment, is going to continue to benefit from increased diversity of, of, of all, all the kinds of people who will go into that field. So it's something that we are really encouraging and embracing here at NUI Galway, and I'd just like to play this short video. My name is Neve Kyo, and I'm studying mechanical engineering at NUI Galway. Both my parents are engineers, um, so I've always kind of had an influence there since I, I forever, basically. I came to the Open Day in NUI Galway and I just really like the campus, I like the college. Um, I found some of the lectures we got to talk to on the day were really engaging and it was just really interesting overall. The engineering building is a great facility um, just to be able to have um, all the labs that we do and um, to be able to do this project. The Geek Project is a team of 20 engineering from across all different disciplines. We design, build and race a energy efficient car to compete in the competition for teams from all over Europe for energy efficiency. It's been great working on the car because you get to take the project from the start 
build on it, improve on it throughout the year. And then finally in London, getting to race it, getting to see the car on track is hugely rewarding and uh, there's a great sense of achievement. This is just a little sample of some of our engineering graduates from recent years and what they've gone on to do. We are um, sending graduates to work in some of the world's um, most high profile companies like Accenture, Toyota. Um, we're also sending graduates out to start form their own companies. One of my former classmates has um, set up two companies in the medical device industry. Um, former PhD student in mechanical engineering has founded his own battery company. So these are graduates who are going out and making their mark on the world um, in, their, in their chosen area of engineering. In terms then of what it takes to gain entry to engineering, you need H5 results in the Leaving Cert in two subjects, um, H7 or O6 in four subjects, you do need a laboratory science subject and um, you need a H4 in Leaving Cert Maths. Um, as an alternative to that, you can get a pass in our special maths exam, which is held just before the first year begins. It's held in August and it's preceded by a short course over the course of a week to sort of get you up to speed with the essentials of the maths that's needed in engineering. One thing I just say about maths is that engineering is not all maths but maths does underpin a lot of what engineers do. So, um, so it, is, it is something that we do need to um, have our incoming students um, be au fait with maths. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and ask that you consider joining us to create a better future and to engineer the future. Thank you.